Hey Ben, Casey here with uh, Constructiva Realty Inspections. Um, first of all, thanks for having me out here. I really appreciate it. I, I certainly do. Uh, let me show you some of the things that I found uh, out here this afternoon. We'll start with the outside. So you got some places here. You can see where the sheathing has not been overlapped and is not properly fastened. In fact, they use these tiny little staples here on the, the left side. Those are not the proper fasteners for this siding. There's a couple of places where I'm seeing this, so that needs to be repaired. The door needs to have uh, flashing tape around it, just like your windows do here on the sides and at the top here. Um, you don't have that around your front entry door. In fact, this sheathing, all of these seams, vertical and horizontal, are supposed to be backed by um, a stud and you can see here that this seam this seam and in fact over here this giant seam they have not been backed by studs this is the one for the second story at the the front gable uh, neither of these seams here have been backed by studs so those don't have the proper um, those don't have the proper reinforcement that uh, is required there okay for your garage opening now first of all to understand the garage opening is this is one of the weakest points of the house because you don't have any wall really here at, at this garage space so all the strength of what wall would be here is concentrated on to essentially two little legs on either side so it's imperative that they are properly uh they're done according to the to the plan now this type of um, the way that they've designed this garage is with hold downs. So you've only got one here. There should be one on the side and one on this side of each of these sides of the opening. So you only got one instead of two on either side. Also, the fasteners, these, sh you should have uh, a grid pattern of fasteners every three inches, vertical and horizontal, where this sheathing meets this header now inside you can see of course there's no nut or washer on either of these anchor bolts but these are the wrong size anchor bolts they should be um, 5 8 inch with a 2 by 2 washer uh, in fact there should be not one but three of these boards this is your bottom plate three bottom plates uh, tripled up and uh, you can see this giant gap right here between your header and the studs. Same thing over here. So that needs to be shimmed up at the very least. Over here is another example of the wrong fasteners used, these tiny little staples. And uh, so the right staples need to be put in here and then this tape needs to be extended all the way down because this gap has to be sealed. Here they've used the wrong tape. This is not the, the right tape for this uh, material. So it looks like during the pour of the foundation, a uh, piece of this stuff, the sheathing, uh, slipped down into the, uh, the exterior beam and just got cemented up. Um, termites are gonna get into this, chew it up. You'd, you know, it, it would be a good idea for them to pull that out to try to prevent any kind of uh, we're destroying insect activity on this side. Up here, you're missing tape. Uh, all these penetrations should have a flashing tape or a, a liquid flashing around them. This damaged sheathing here, this, this, should, this should be replaced in my opinion. Um, there's another manufacturer that basically makes the same stuff and they say any tear over three inches should have the, uh, the material replaced. So all they did is really just put some, some tape on it, try to keep the water out. Speaking of tape, this isn't sealing very well. You can imagine any water that runs down this is just gonna get behind it. You definitely don't want that. So this wall here with this diagonal piece, there and there, that's called let-in bracing. Let-in bracing, and that's to, uh, that's to help, uh, this, this is a braced wall is what it is. So it helps to prevent any kind of uh, racking from happening in the house. On braced walls, they need to have 
anchor bolts, not just these little shot pins, but uh, proper anchor bolts all the way down. So they're missing sufficient anchorage here at the shear wall. Speaking of shear wall, uh, lead embracing cannot be greater than 60 degrees from the, uh, at this angle here from the floor. So this is a little bit obtuse, not obtuse, but you know what I mean, bigger than 60 degrees. So one of the things I had mentioned in our phone call was that uh, this is your double top plate, the bottom one and the top one. And you can see here there's a splice and here there's a splice. These splices need to be greater than 24 inches apart. So you've got one here. You've got one here at the toilet of the primary bathroom. Upstairs, you've got one right here. And just over, you've got another one right here. So considering that this is a braced wall, uh, that's a fairly weak spot because of that. So I mentioned that you're missing some anchor bolts. Uh, you're missing anchor bolts here in this corner. They're supposed to be every six feet maximum. Now you can see this one, that bolt is missing the washer and the nut, and it is not within the middle third of the bottom plate. So this whole washer nut missing action is uh, all the way around the house. This window here in the office is binding. Don't want to go up any higher than that. You can also see it's got a crack in it right here. So they have yet to install the upper attic ventilation. So no ventilation up there yet. I'm sure they'll get to that though. Over here in the living room, you can see this gusset plate is damaged here at the truss. Just wide open there. Looks like that truss member had gotten knocked loose and that needs to be repaired. So here in the primary bathroom, this is that vent that I had mentioned that looks like it had been pulled off at some point. Now you have your exhaust vent here that is connected to the bathroom over there. And then your toilet has this vent that goes up into the ceiling. And then over your shower, you've got this one that runs out into your roof. I said ceiling, I meant roof, sorry about that. But I'm uh, not sure where this one's supposed to go. So at the top of your stairs, you've got this floor truss and it is being held up by this hanger. This hanger is missing nails. So that should have all those nail holes filled. Here at the uh, closet underneath the stairs at this wall, you can see that you got some gaps at the tops of these studs there, coming over the other side here and here. Over time, that's gonna cause cracks in your drywall. So that needs to be shimmed up. Coming up the stairs. So here at the landing, I wanted to show you this. You've got um, this header that's coming across bearing on these two studs. Then you have this stud, uh, which makes up part of your corner. Coming all the way down to this weirdness. Uh, this should have, these three studs should continue on. Um, but your load path from these three studs should continue on through here and then down to the foundation. You do have this stud here uh, and, and this just furred out part of the wall, but uh, it's not really considered sufficient support for these, these three load bearing studs. Coming up here, you've got a pretty damaged stud here at this, uh, at this spot. And then it looks like to make room for this vent, your plumber's chopped part of that truss member, part of that uh, bottom cord. So you've lost a lot of strength there in the bottom cord. That's a big no-no. Thank you, Mr. Plumbers. So that needs to be fixed. So that's pretty much it. Um, there'll be a few other little things on the report, but those are really the bigger items. Definitely wanna get those issues with the trusses and with the, um, with the exterior sheathing repaired. Uh, you know, the structural integrity and the water resistive properties of this, of this sheathing, it's really important. The sheathing is 
it's glorified cardboard, you know, it's uh, not plywood, it's not OSB, um, it's, it's, it's literally cardboard. And it, it only meets the minimum design strength when it is properly installed according to manufacturer's installation instructions. So it's really important that that gets taken care of. Um, like I said, a couple things that I do like is the fact that you, you're on two by sixes instead of two by four walls, uh, super beefy and uh, gives you a little bit more uh, space here in this wall cavity for insulation. Um, and the design of the house is gorgeous. It's gonna be a beautiful place. Uh, so, uh, but would be good to get these things taken care of. See what the, see what the builder says about it. So let me know if y'all have any questions. Thanks.